I would thank the organizers of LOD Global Summit 21 to give me this opportunity to address this August gathering. I'm going to talk on posterior component separation, that is PCST. I'm Dr. Ramesh Punjani, President of Abdominal Wall Reconstruction Surgeons Community. I bring greetings from Mumbai. I have no conflict of interest. <clears throat> if you see the publication uh, which is there on LOD, so this is a chapter which is written in textbook of Hunia Surgery Current Principles, which is uh, Yuri Novitsky's edited books. And that says that component separation increases the size of abdominal cavity. So for the loss of domain cases, the component separation is a boon and it causes an increase in size and decreases the intraabdominal tension, which is that, that is what is required. If you see, there is an evidence also uh, by this particular paper, which was uh, appeared in Annals of Surgery May 2010 by Sonia et al. And they actually have measured the intraabdominal volume in a patients who have undergone a component separation for a massive ventral hernia. And they also concluded that the component separation technique restores the lost abdominal domain by increasing its volume. So the lost domain of the abdomen, it, is, it, it comes back uh, with this component separation. So the component separation do remain the answer for uh, the patients with LOD. Now, what is posterior component separation? So that's a professor Yuri Novitsky has actually designed and this is now being known as a transverse abdominal release or the TAR. And that is what has actually taken the whole world by its feet. And more and more people are now doing a posterior component separation rather than anterior component separation for most of the cases of LOD. So, and that is very obvious because if we see this diagram, which is again from the same textbook of hernia surgery current principles, the transverse abdominis muscle is actually a transverse fibers. And this fibers act as a corset by creating a hoop tension around the abdomen. Going by this, it is very obvious that the division of this should reduce the tension. So the moment we divide the transverse abdominis muscle, the, the tension inside the abdominal cavity reduces and that will now be able to accommodate more and more viscera which has been eviscerated and that is actually what we need in a patients of loss of domain. So transverse abdominal release is a boon for a cases with loss of domain. Uh, if we see the evaluation of, of uh, anterior versus posterior repair, so this is one uh, experimental cadaveric study which was done by Arnav Majudar and Novitsky's group and which actually has been published in Surgical Endoscopy 2020. And where what they did is that in a fresh cadavers, they actually did an anterior component separation and a posterior component separation. And for each of the steps of this surgery, they actually measured the myofascial release, which they would be getting it. And they found this results that in an anterior component separation cadaver, the advancement of anterior fascia was with subcutaneous was 6.4 centimeter with external oblique, it was 7.8 centimeter. And where the retrorectus dissection was added, it became 8.8 .8 centimeter. So this is where the one side of the uh, component separation. And similarly with the posterior component separation, if you see the figures are all higher. And that especially the retromuscular bondage is done, it is almost 10 centimeter from each side. So almost 20 centimeter large defects would be able to close with the transverse abdominis release. And of course, with the PCST, there'll be an also advancement of the posterior fissure to a very big extent. So this is what is the beauty of this procedure, where it is actually a more myofascial release. Now, once we decide to do a PCST, what are the prerequisites? So again, this is uh, there in the textbook of hernia surgery, where he has written uh, Gregory, that patient preparation requires five parameters. The one is the tobacco should be stopped one month prior and two months after the surgery. The albumin, the serum albumin should be more than 3.5. And if not, then you have to do a nutritional correction. HbA1c in a diabetic has to be less than seven. If not, you have to involve the endocrinologist and make it so. Prehabilitation, the patient has to be mobile and minimum 30 minutes of walk per day should be there for this patient for last few days before the surgery and a BMI has to be less than 35. If not, then a diet consultation or a bariatric procedure for a very high BMIs. So these are all the different steps of surgery, which include incision, packing of the abdomen, incision of posterior rectus sheath, retrorectal rectus dissection, TA release, and a retromuscular dissection, followed by a PRS closer with the zip sign, which you can see when you're done comfortably. When you cannot, in some patients with the intraperitoneal mesh is being excised, you may have to patch it up with vicryl mesh. So every time, person doing a posterior component separation must make an availability of vicryl mesh with him. And so also the tap block before the end of the procedure, followed by insertion of a very large piece of mesh, 
which is usually a medium weight polypropylene, but sometimes in LOD, it could be even a heavy weight polypropylene, and then a closure of the entry abdominal wall followed by a perfect skin closure. So this is in a nutshell is the uh, different steps of TAR, which will not go into a details, but few important steps that we'll see is that always the sac needs to be preserved. So the sac is divided into two hemisacs, and one part of the sac goes along with the anterior rectus sheath, the other goes with the posterior rectus sheath, and these two flaps are preserved till the end of the surgery, where you can use them for a bridging if required. The another important point while doing a transverse abdominal release is that a linear alba is given a traction, so also posterior rectus sheath. Now, it has to be done in such a manner that you divide the posterior lamella of internal oblique followed by transverse abdominis. But in case the, the retraction by the assistant of the posterior rectus sheath is higher, you may actually slip in and may start dividing the linear seminal. So that is one of the very, very important uh, care that has to be taken uh, when doing a posterior component separation. And of course, then the, the amount of mesh that has to be used. So typically, um, a 30 by 30 centimeter mesh in a diamond format is used, but that's not adequate in most of the cases of LOD, and you will have to supplement by another 30 by 30 in a rectangular fashion, making it an inverted home plate, or maybe a bigger mesh is of 50 by 50 that will take care of this problem. So at the end of the TAR procedure, there has to be a picture like this, where there is a big piece of mesh which is lying in the sublay position, going into the uh, place between the divided transverse abdominis and the transalis fascia, and it reaches right up to the paraspinal muscles on either side. And uh, longitudinally, it goes from right from diaphragm to the pelvis. And that's how there is a complete giant prosthetic reinforcement of the visceral sac. Now, there are certain precautions while uh, closing the anterior fascia, and that we have to measure the plateau pulmonary pressure on an anesthesia machine. If the rise is more than six units, it will need an overnight ventilatory care. So this patient should not be extubated, should be wheeled into ICU and they should be monitored overnight. If it is rising is more than 11 units, that's really an alarm because it's a setting in of abdominal compartment syndrome. And you have to then what you do is that you will probably untie those things and check for completion of TAR. Many times, you know, you will realize that something more can be released by doing a completion of TAR. And if that is not so, a bridging repair is definitely an option. But then the, uh, the breach portion now here in this patient who had a very large loss of domain with a very big defect, we could not close it by all the means. And then what we did is we just sutured the edge of the mesh with the defect and then we covered with a thick sac which was sealed. So that's how this uh, surgery is done. For a completion of the tar, it is usually this right and the left upper quadrant, you know, where the, if you uh, enlarge this and see, so it's a decussation of the vertical diaphragmatic fibers with the transverse, transverse abdominis fibers and one has to separate till then. That is what actually gives a most of the time completion of the tar and the bridging is avoided. Uh, similarly, near the central tendon, in the center in the cephalite portion, when a transverse abdomen is done, this uh, division has to actually converge. Otherwise, if you go straight, you can actually hit the central tendon and may do a um, iatrogenic morgagnes hernia. Now, uh, there are a lot of cases we have done over the last two, three years, and these are the patients who had a really big a loss of domain with a very large hernia, practically no abdominal wall. This patient had a skin graft and then again had a big hernia. This is one more patient, you know, who had a hernia. This is one lady who had a very huge hernia and this is another one with a huge hernia. So we have a sizable experience of these allodic cases. And we, in fact, published our first 100 cases in, uh, of TAR in a hernia journal just very recently. And what we have about uh, almost uh, 100 cases out of which 14 had a documented loss of domain with a Tanaka index of averagely 37.5. The defect size of around 13.4 centimeter and we could close midline in all but three cases. So a well done tar, a well done tar is always an asset to a surgeon and we had no major complication and no recurrence so far. The PCST versus ACST, which is better. So advantage of PCST over ACST in cases of loss of domain is that since you are not raising any lipocutaneous flap, the skin necrosis doesn't happen. The surgical site occurrence, surgical site infection, surgical site occurrence requiring procedural intervention and therefore readmission, all is less in posterior component separation as compared to anterior component separation. You are putting a very, very wide processes and therefore the, the repairs are very lasting. The recurrence rates are all in single digits in most of the series. And the versatility of this procedure that you can do this for atypical lateral parastomal hernia all across. So PCST is an ideal solution for large mental hernia with LOD. Even the lateral hernia, now this patient had a 
iliac blade which was removed for chondrosarcoma and there is a huge defect with a large evisceration of the contents and this patient actually underwent a bilateral tar and we could actually close the defect and bring back the cylinder back into action and we, we had to use a bone anchors on the bone to really fix this mesh firmly this patient is doing well for last two years so you can see a bone anchors here were fixed i thank you very much for giving me the opportunity and um, uh, i would uh, be ready if there are any questions to be asked thank you so much Thank you.